Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a bootable USB drive for your Ubuntu operating system. So for creating a bootable USB drive for your Ubuntu operating system, you need two things. First one is the ISO file of your official Ubuntu operating system, which is available on the official website of Ubuntu. And the second thing is a tool which will help us to create this bootable USB drive. And the third thing is obviously the USB uh, drive, which should be uh, 4 GB at least, but I would recommend you to use 8 GB bootable uh, USB drive, okay? So if you have 8 GB bootable USB drive, then you are good to go. So let's see how we can download the ISO file first of all for Ubuntu operating system. You can just search for Ubuntu and the first link which will appear here will be from ubuntu.com. So I'm going to just click on this link and straight away you will uh, see uh, this option here which says uh, what's new in Ubuntu 20.04 because 20.04 is the latest version of Ubuntu which is released recently. So here you will see a downloads uh, tab here and when you click on the download tab you will see the ubuntu desktop so you can just click on uh, the version which is available and most probably you might want to install the lts version okay so make sure that whenever you install ubuntu you install the lts version lts means the long-term support version which will uh, uh, at least run for two years, okay? So the support will run for two years. So I'm going to just click on Ubuntu desktop and here you will see the download button. So I'm going to just click on the download button and when you click on the download button, the ISO file will be downloaded on your uh, Windows operating system. So this file is around 2.5 GB file, so it will take some time to download, but I have already downloaded this file on my windows operating system so i'm going to just cancel uh, this download and also if you want to support ubuntu project then you can uh, just uh, give small donation to ubuntu for now i don't want to do anything so i have just downloaded the iso file so once you have downloaded the iso file it's going to look like this in case you have downloaded the 2004 version of ubuntu so the name is ubuntu-2004-desktop-2004 hyphen hyphen desktop hyphen amd64.iso file. So Rufus is a tool which will allow you to create bootable USB drives on your Windows operating system. So the USB drive which you will create using Rufus, you can use it to install, let's say, Windows operating system or Ubuntu operating system or any other Linux or Windows operating system. So let's see how we can install Rufus on our Windows operating system. So the first uh, thing you need to do is you just need to go to your favorite browser and search for Rufus. And the first link which will appear here will be from Rufus.ie. And you can see Rufus is a small application which creates a bootable USB drive which can then be used to install Microsoft Windows, Linux, or DOS operating system. So I'm going to just click on this uh, link here, and then straight away uh, you will be see able to see uh, this kind of interface here. From here you can choose your language. By default it's in English, but if you want to choose any other language, you can choose it from here. And when you scroll down, you will be able to see uh, the latest version of uh, Rufus here. So what we are going to do is we are going to choose uh, the latest one which is on the top which is Rufus 3.10 at the time of making this video. So I'm going to just click on this link which will uh, download this uh, Rufus.exe file. So I'm going to just click on save which is going to save this exe file and once this executable file is downloaded just click on this executable file and then I'm going to minimize the browser here. And here it says, do you want to allow Rufus to check for the application updates online? I'm going to just say yes here. So once your Rufus tool is launched, 
we are going to insert our USB drive. So I'm going to just insert my uh, USB drive here and you just need to wait for a few seconds until this Rufus tool detects this USB drive. And as you can see, this USB drive is 8 GB in size, which is okay for me. So now using this boot selection option, just leave it as default, which is disk or ISO image. And then we are going to click on this select option. So just click on select option and then give the path of your ISO file where your ISO file is downloaded on your Windows operating system. So as you can see, my Ubuntu uh, operating system ISO file is located here. So I'm going to just select it and then click on OK, which is going to just import this file into this Rufus tool. Now uh, you can also do the checksum for your image, but because we have downloaded this uh, ISO file from the official website, so you can also skip this step. Now in the partition scheme, just leave it as default, which is MBR and also target system. You can just leave it as default, which is BIOS or UEFI. And then the volume name, this will be the name of your USB drive. So you can uh, just leave it as default. And then the file system also, you can leave it as default. So you can leave everything as shown in uh, this uh, tool. And then once you are ready, you can click on the start button. You have also these uh, advanced uh, format options. Uh, you can uh, quickly see them, but I'm going to leave everything as default here. And then I can uh, just click on the start button. So this warning says download required. This image uses uh, uh, Sys Linux version, this one, but this application only includes the installation file for Sys Linux. So I'm going to just click on yes, which is going to download it. And then this warning appears, which is right in the ISO image mode, which is recommended. So I'm going to just click on OK. But before clicking on OK, make sure that your USB drive is completely empty. Otherwise, whatever data you have inside your USB drive will be lost. I'm going to just click on OK now. And now I can see uh, this warning which says all data on the device, uh, this one will be destroyed. So make sure and double check if you want any data inside your USB drive, just back it up. And you, if you are sure that you don't need any data and your USB drive is totally empty, you can just click on OK, which is going to start the process of creating this bootable uh, USB drive. So here you can see the process. And once this green progress bar reaches to the end, then your bootable USB drive will be finished. So now I can see this message which says ready. That means my bootable USB drive for the Ubuntu operating system is ready. So let me go to uh, the PC and let me show you uh, this uh, E drive, which is my USB drive. You will be able to see the name which you have chosen. So in my case, I have chosen Ubuntu 20.04. So now you just need to remove your uh, bootable USB drive and then you just need to uh, shut down your operating system on which you are currently working in. So right now I'm working on my uh, Windows operating system. So I need to shut it down. So on my HP laptop, the procedure is when I uh, just press the power button, I immediately need to uh, press the escape key continuously. And this will uh, enable me to enter in the boot mode. And then I just need to click on the F9 key, which is for boot device option. So whatever uh, function key you see here in front of boot device options, just press that key. In my case, it's F9. And when this boot menu uh, starts, you need to make sure that uh, this removable devices is on the top. So you can move them using arrow keys. Uh, the instruction will be there on your uh, screen. So you just need to make sure that this removable device is on the top. And then you just need to press enter. And this is going to restart your uh, operating system. And now you will see this kind of window here. 
So on the left hand side, you can choose the language in which you want to install Ubuntu. You can see many uh, languages are given here, but for uh, now I will choose uh, English as my language and then I will click on the install Ubuntu button here. Now in the next window, you will see the keyboard layout. So from here, you can choose the keyboard layout, whatever keyboard layout you are using on your laptop or on your keyboard. So in my case, I'm using a German keyboard, so I can uh, just move to the German uh, keyboard option here. So I'm going to just search for the German keyboard, which is this one. You can choose any other keyboard from here, okay? So I'm going to choose the German keyboard and then on the right hand side, I will just choose German as uh, the language here. And then you can also test your keyboard by typing uh, something in this box. So just choose your keyboard language here and then click on continue button. And here on this window, you will see update and other softwares. So I normally just leave it as normal installation option checked. And also I uh, leave this option also checked, which is download updates while installing Ubuntu. Also, I'm going to just check this option also, which is install third party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware and additional media formats. So just check all the options which I have checked and then click on continue. And here in the installation type, just leave this option uh, as default, which is erase disk and install Ubuntu. So this is not going to erase anything because you are installing Ubuntu on your virtual box. You are not installing Ubuntu on your hardware, right? So don't worry, it's not going to erase any disk or anything from your Windows operating system. Just leave it as erase disk and install Ubuntu and then click on install now. Now here you will see this warning which says, if you continue the changes listed below, will be written. I will just click on continue button here. Now in the next step, you can choose the location which is nearer to your physical location. So I have chosen this location which is nearer to uh, my uh, physical location. And then I'm going to click on the continue button. And here you can uh, just give the name to your Ubuntu operating system. For example, I'm going to just write uh, code bind here as the name and as the con computer name here I can even remove uh, the virtual box from the end because I just want to give the same name as the computer name also and also as the username I will uh, just uh, leave it as code bind if you want to change uh, these uh, names uh, so let's say you want to give the different username here you can uh, do that also and then you can just provide the password. I'm going to just provide the password. For now, it's a weak password, but you might want to provide the stronger password than this. And then you just need to confirm this password. And once you are uh, done with that, you just need to click on the continue button. And now the installation of Ubuntu will start. So now at this step, you don't need to do anything until Ubuntu is installed. So I will also wait for uh, the installation to be finished. And after some time, you will see uh, this kind of window which says installation is complete. You need to restart the computer in order to use the new installation. So I'm going to just click on the restart now button. And at this point, it says, please remove the installation medium, then press enter. So I'm going to just press enter here. And now I can see the Ubuntu operating system is starting. And now I can see uh, this login window here. So if you remember, this is the username which I have given to my Ubuntu operating system. So I will just click on this user and then I will provide the password which I have uh, given at the time of installation and then press enter. So first of all, you will see this kind of welcome window here. You can uh, click on the skip option here. And also you can just click on the next, next and next, and then click on done. 
and you will be able to see your Ubuntu desktop here, right? 